Scent hound is a term used to describe a subset of hunting dogs defined by their highly acute sense of smell and very long ears. While you'd think having long ass ears would help the dogs hear better, it turns out they're actually better suited for helping them smell things. And far away, Lucas, you can speak to this a little bit, can't you? Because you own a, a miniature dash hunt, which I believe is a kind of hunting dog, yes? Yeah, I believe they were originally bred to, like, hunt badgers. And don't worry, folks at home, here are many, many pictures of Lucas's dog. <laughs> What's your dog's name? It's Cade. Cade. Oh, God. I, I, every time you, like, post a picture of Cade, I'm like, fuck it, I want a dog. Every time it's like, I want a dog right now, and I think, I can't have a dog because then I've got to move. Uh, Lucas, yeah, can you speak to um, his sense of smell? Is that started to develop yet? Cause can, you, you got him from a puppy, didn't you? Uh, yeah, yeah, we, we got him as a puppy, and he has a insane sense of smell. Like, and um, that's true of all dogs, but it's especially um, true of um, scent dogs and hunting dogs in general. And something I should mention is that dogs with massive ears can still hear exceptionally well and with far greater acuity than like any human. It's just that hearing is not as important to those dogs as smelling things, um, because they, pr the primary way in which they explore their environment is through smell, not hearing. And, yeah, um, and I can attest to that of like walking Cade, like he walks by his nose. And that's one of the things that blows my mind about dogs is that some of them have been selectively bred for such specific things. And I think the best example of how specific a trait is possible to breed onto a dog um, is the turnspit dog pictured behind me. It's like a, it looks like a terrier and its purpose was to walk on a wheel which would turn a spit on which meat was. And that was it. That was the whole purpose of that dog. Because back in the days before ovens, if you wanted to cook a big piece of meat, someone had to stand and turn the spit all fucking day. And as you might imagine, doing that is a ball ache. So what they did is they built a wheel and they put dogs on that wheel and made them walk all day. But dogs did not like doing that. So they selectively bred dogs that were better at doing that until they got turn spit dogs, which were basically just hyper specialized for that one task. And all they would do is just walk on that wheel all fucking day. And stuff like that sounds ridiculous. So you think, well, what was the alternative? Do it yourself. Fuck that. <laughs> no, instead, we're going to spend like generations upon generations just slowly, selectively breeding an animal to do it for us. That sounds much simpler, Carl. Well, to be fair, it, it's, it takes more effort, but the end result is you have a dog that just does the job. And it's the same thing with the topic of today's video, scent hounds, which... Originally started life as dogs with a very keen sense of smell, and over many generations, humanity selectively bred dogs that had an especially keen sense of smell to create breeds like the Bloodhound, which has such a sensitive sense of smell, it is capable of tracking scents that are, in some cases, several weeks old, over many hundreds of miles. That just baffles me completely. Like, we obviously aren't good at smelling, but I can't imagine, no. like, sense even lasting that long that you could track them weeks later yeah and it's uh, really difficult to visualize for humans because like, like if you can see a stain on the floor and you can tell it's a couple of weeks old like, that's about the closest parallel we have but dogs can smell that stain and where it came from and then track where it went to and one of the descriptors i've heard that like makes my mind just melt is that bloodhounds have such a sensitive sense of smell they can smell effectively through time because they can smell from weeks ago, and they can, like, you know, layers of smells and, like, pass what they mean. Mm, yeah. And then track them over hundreds of fucking miles, and their noses are so sensitive that um, evidence gathered using a bloodhound is admissible in court, because it seems to be that effective and that accurate. And that's amazing. Like, imagine getting convicted because a fucking dog said you did it. And it sounds stupid, but the dog is more accurate than any scientific instrumentation we have access to. Yeah, a lot of hounds have really good smell, but what does it have to do with just those adorable floppy ears? Yeah, something folks at home will notice as a selection of scent and hunting hounds appear behind me is that they all have large floppy ears. And there is a reason for that, and it's almost as stupid as dash hunts being long, so you can pull them out of badger dens. <laughs> And the most obvious reason for having those big floppy ears is that it protects the dog's ear canal. Because something you'll notice about a lot of hunting hounds is that if they're not very close to the ground, like a dash hound, um, you know, because they have the really tiny short legs, um, they will walk with their head down. 
a lot of the time because like, you know, their primary way of exploring the world, as mentioned, is scent. So they will put their head close to the ground when they're walking, uh, which leaves their ears in range of things like, you know, insects on the ground. And having ears that flop over and protect the ear canal prevents things like insects and just other irritants from getting into the ear canal, which is very sensitive on a dog. And there's probably a couple of people watching this at home thinking, that's ridiculous. Think about now what you do when a bee flies near your ear and how much you shit your pants when a bee goes And now imagine that you had to walk across a field full of bees, like doing the flowers on the floor when you're like dandelions and stuff, with your head an inch off the ground. So I guess that's kind of like the opposite to, you know, things like guard dogs where they have the pointy up ears to hear. Yeah, um, things like Dobermans and um, like Alsatians or German Shepherds, I think they're known in some parts of the world, where they tend to have um, ears that point up and also are capable of like swiveling independently to allow the dog um, to track using its um, highly acute sense of hearing much better than other breeds of dog. And those breeds of dog, again, are just the result of like hundreds of generations of selective breeding, of just taking desirable traits in a guard animal, such as you know, good hearing and massive ears that can just like, you know, swivel on an axis to pinpoint where noise is coming from. And it's incredible to think that we did that. Like not we, as in like, you know, me and you, but like, you know, just humans in general were able to selectively breed animals for such specific purposes. I get it because I bred competitive Pokemon. That's true, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and like Luke, like how many generations does it take to get a perfectly IV trained Pokemon that has the exact traits that you want it to have? Yeah. It's basically the exact same concept, just simplified and then put into a video game where you make like um, uh, pocket monsters kick the shit out of each other. Bring it back to scent hounds and their massive ears and how those massive ears help them smell better. Because there's probably some people out there thinking, how do big ears help things smell better? And the answer is like indirectly. So the ears themselves don't like contribute to the dog's sense of smell at all. However, um, as mentioned previously, when scent hounds um, just walk about or are tracking a scent, they will have their head very, very low to the ground. And when they are doing this, you'll see them snuffle. And you've probably seen Kay do that a lot, yeah? A lot, when yeah. snuffling, right, um, like, you know, to stir up scents that are there that maybe you can't see or even detect, but he can. And he knows they're there. And have you seen him do that with something? Like maybe you've had like um, a bag of crisps previously and he knows it's been there, something like that. My old dog used to do that a lot. Yeah, like he does it a lot you know if we've just had some food and he walks around just like trying to find where that scent has come from like oh i can yeah. smell that chicken's been cooked recently but i don't know where the chicken is now yet the thinking is that dogs with especially long ears like bloodhounds and basset hounds and things like that when they put their head down to track a scent their ears drag along the ground and in doing so will stir up scents that are on the ground and then drive them towards the dog's nose right yeah so if you if you think like a dog's head, its ears hanging down like, as it moves forward, its ears drag along the ground. And then when it like you know puts its head up, its like scents are trapped on the ends of its ears, and they'll get flicked up towards its nose. And that's also the same reason why a lot of dogs known for their especially keen sense of smell, like bloodhounds, have really wrinkly faces. You look at them and go, why why are their faces wrinkly as shit? Why do they look like a ball sack? The answer is that those wrinkles also help store scents. Um, to the point where things like bloodhounds are noted to like, keep scents in certain folds of their face to refer to while tracking. So what they'll do is they'll stir up a scent with their snout and their ears, and they'll get the scent and they'll lodge it in one of the, like, the many folds on their face, and then if they need help right, in their head, like, okay, what, what's the scent remind myself? They'll just sniff. And that allows the dog to constantly remind itself of what the scent it's tracking is, because it's only just lodged in a part of its face. That's so weird. It's so, it is, and it's really hard to comprehend, because we don't have a sense of smell that acute. So the idea of being able to track and remember a scent over such like a vast distance and a long length of time, is just, it's almost incomprehensible to a human. And it's like the one about sharks, where, do you know sharks can smell in stereo? What? Yeah, their sense of smell is so acute that um, their nostrils can detect the different amounts of blood and things in the water, so they can use smell to direct themselves. So they can smell which side the blood is coming from, essentially. Yeah, and then it can just use that process to just zero in on where um, prey is. Oh, man. And that's the thing is, like, you can't even comprehend that because like, it's impossible to just imagine having a sense that acute. It's like the ones like owls and something where they can see for, like, hundreds of miles with, like, perfect visual acuity. And it's, like, the equivalent of just having, like, binoculars. I'm like, what? How? Meanwhile, I can't see my hand without two lenses in front of my fucking face. 
It's ridiculous. But the thing, the, the important thing to know though is that all these dogs are very good boys.